Well, I've got a new cup of coffee. I'm ready to rock. Let's do this. <clears throat> so we've talked a little bit about mortgages, which is technically a lien. It's the, probably the most common lien. There are some other liens we have to worry about as well, or the underwriter will have to worry about. And then there's these things called judgments. Um, so there are unknown liens. Now, when they say unknown, they don't necessarily mean unknown to the underwriter. They may mean unknown to the owner of the property. Maybe they have been accused of something. Well, I don't want to get into that. <clears throat> well, I guess we do get into that. Uh, failed to pay a bill, a bank statement, a credit card, and a company has placed a lien on the property. So it's unknown from the fact of the owner. These are going to pop up, hopefully, in these searches that the underwriter is going to be searching. And remember I told you earlier that they may use several sources to gather information. One of them could be the court records for civil judgments or criminal judgments. I'm not sure that's 100% correct as far as criminal because I don't think criminal puts a lien on your property, but they can in certain things like RICO acts. So it could be that, I guess. So it's not just the banks that these people have to worry about. <clears throat> there are other people that can put liens on the property. Contractors, builders, taxing authorities, utility companies. All of these people, other people, can put liens on your property. All right, all of these can show up. One of the most common is a mechanics lien. And the underwriter is going to have to see how they can work through getting this mechanics lien removed, or they could put it in the exception in section B2 of the title work and exclude that from being insured if they can't get it removed. <clears throat> Now, one of the things I have made an assumption on, and maybe we should check back, is you understand what an exception is. An exception is something that the underwriter has found that he can't, with 100% certainty, guarantee the answer. All right? So, if he can't get the mechanic to remove the mechanics lien, or he can't validate a judgment, they will put something in an exception so that if that issue becomes a potential claim down the road, the insurance company is going to say, we didn't insure that. Think of it like a pre-existing condition when you get health insurance or life insurance. Very similar. On a very basic level, a pre-existing condition would be something that's not covered in your insurance, right? Hey, I, I got new insurance, but I've already got ingrown toenails. Okay, we're going to not insure anything to do with ingrown toenails because it was pre-existing and we have listed that in the exemptions. Very similar, all right? Section B of the title work, two, lists exceptions. They may put a mechanics lien there and say, hey, if this mechanic ever tries to come back, you can't claim a claim against our insurance because we're telling you up front in the exceptions, we are not including that in your policy. All right. So a mechanics lien has to go through the process of trying to get it removed. Hopefully the seller will do what he's supposed to do and just pay that mechanic and the mechanic will then release the lien and then the underwriter can find the lien that got placed and the release of that lien. If there are, that doesn't happen, then the underwriter definitely has to dig into some other documents to make sure. Now, the problem is there are many different rules on how mechanics liens actually get filed. They can get filed when the property has been improved. They can get filed when they're getting ready to, like builders would. They, have, they can file a mechanics lien once it's completed. They can do it 
when they drop the material, they can also record it potentially when they've done their last day of work. So like the HVAC company comes out, puts a new air conditioning system in, comes out 30 days later to check um, the action and activity, they could file it from that date rather than the date it got installed because they've done work on it then. So there are many other, many ways that that mechanics liens can get filed. Now there are some th uh, requirements about mechanics liens being stale. They have to be recorded within a time frame and mechanics liens actually fall off and I believe it's 10 years. So if the mechanics lien is 10 years or older, may not be a valid lien anymore. Now I believe that mechanic can renew his mechanic lien anytime he wants. Question? No. Yeah. The question is what's a mechanic? Good question. Realize that a mechanic in the term of mechanics lien does not mean a car mechanic, all right? We think of mechanics in today's terminology as, hey, the mechanic fixed my brakes, you know, changed my tires, whatever. In the world of liens, mechanics are anybody that improve your property. So like cabinet makers, you got new cabinets placed in your house and you didn't pay for them, they can file a mechanics lien. Uh, subcontractors for a builder. If you've ever bought a brand new house, there are uh, contractor waivers or mechanic lien waivers so that the subcontractor can't sue the contractor because let's say the general contractor didn't pay the painting crew. Well, the painting crew would then place a mechanics lien on the property because that's the property they worked on that's the only place they could do it. Well, as the buyer of that new house, you paid the builder and go, wait a minute, I paid the builder the 400000 for the house. How am I? Because he has to pay the subs. And typically on a brand new house, all of the subs will sign off saying, yes, I've been paid and I can't file a mechanics lien. That way, when you pay the builder, you know that there is hopefully no potential mechanics liens coming down from a new construction, all right? So all of those have to be in there and all of that stuff, this underwriter is going to have to justify as well. Now, there are some other liens that can get recorded and I've got a list up here, uh, tax liens. There could be a federal tax lien for someone that didn't pay their IRS. Yes, they do record liens. FIRPTA, which is the Foreign Investors Real Estate Tax, that could be a lien on there. There's subordination agreements, vendor's lien, that's a mechanic's lien. Could also be your HOA. HOA could put a lien on the property. That would come up as a vendor's lien. Um, one of the other things I didn't mention in writing on here, but let's talk about, is judgments. And I've got it actually in the friggin' title, right? Ooh, that coffee's hot. Judgments. You will notice when you get your documentation back, if you've ever read a title policy, it's uh, one of the very last lines. It says, you know, a judgment search was uh, completed against the seller or the buyer and nothing found. All right. Because see, a judgment is placed upon you by a judge. It's involuntary. Say you hit someone's dog and killed it and that person sued you for $10,000 in civil court and the judge found you were guilty, they could place a lien on you called a judgment. Well, that judgment actually attaches to everything you own. Your house, your car, your boat, your dog, your Frisbee, your children, all of that stuff, all right? <laughs> now, typically it attaches to stuff we track the sale of. Cars, boats, planes, houses, property. I meant it technically goes against your basketball, um, but you know, that you play hoops with in the garage and it attaches to your person. So that's why they do this search because think about this. Let's say someone sold their house, paid off their mortgages. You would think free and clear, right? So the new lender coming in would have first position. Ah, uh -uh, wait, contraire, mon frere. Let, if that person had a 
judgment against them for $5,000 dated last year, it would have priority because they paid their mortgages off, but they didn't pay the judgment off. That judgment would show up, with, which would have last year's date, so the new loan coming in would now be second on the property because he only paid off the mortgages. So that's why they run a judgment search on both the buyer and seller because it attaches to the person as well. And if the buyer has one on him, flip the scenario, let's say it's the buyer. He may have got approved for a loan, but because he has this $10,000 civil suit against him, or whatever number, it could be any number, 2,000, 5,000, doesn't matter. It's against his person. And that person, would it would follow him with whatever he buys, so the money he borrows would not be first anymore, it would be second, because the judgment has last year's date on it being first priority and not this. So that makes the loan this year second, okay? Yeah, very tricky and intricate. You guys have to understand that this underwriter is is <laughs> taking a lot of risk. He's got a he or she has got to do a lot of research on these properties. And now we understand why agents go, "Well, I gave you the title work yesterday. How come I don't have it back, dude?" You know, even if it's an easy transaction, there's four, five, six, eight, ten documents. And if it, the harder you want to make this the more in-depth this underwriter's got to be, and depth equates to time. That's all I'm going to tell you, all right? So we're about done. Not quite. Hold on. We're going to come back for one more.